the 60 liter Fermenter King Uni Tank. This is amazing, it's huge, it's a pressure capable fermenter. It can be a keg too if you want it to be. It has a fantastic flexible bottom dump assembly. Let's check it out, brewers. So let's open up the uni tank first. That's the 60 liter tank. We'll have the plunge valve packaged up on its own in a bit of bubble wrap. You'll find this bag of all the extra bits and bobs that we're gonna put onto this thing. And then of course, there's the stainless steel stand. So we'll put the tank in the stand to begin with while we get some of these other things out of the bag. Packaged in the bag is your collection bottle. You'll find the lid. You'll find the sticker for the volume amount on the tank. You're going to find the posts for the lid, the dry hot port, the pressure relief valve. There are a series of O-rings that are gonna go onto the posts and onto the plunge valve. And you're also gonna find this um, bottom cap assembly, which is gonna be for the bottom of the plunge valve. This is of course the float ball for your floating dip tube. That's the dip tube. You'll find that bag in there as well. You've got some caster wheels because this thing's so big, we know once it's full, if you had to move it around from one place to another, it's easier just to have it on wheels. You'll also find the interior of the um, bottom dump assembly. So this is gonna be fit into the tank and this nut is actually gonna fit on the outside of the tank. Now, this is a much better assembly than has been on other um, dump valves. Uh, we've made this so it's super easy. Older versions of this uh, dump valve on generation two and generation one had a reverse thread on them, which made it really hard to get these things off of the tank for extra cleaning. Ours are actually all a one-way thread, so they're all threaded the exact same way. Um, and what holds this nice and tight inside the tank is this seal that's on this valve assembly. This is a sticker that has some warnings on it about how to use and treat your tank and how that after two years of pressure use, you will need to either get it tested to make sure it's still good to use or you just get a new tank, which is a lot easier. If you do want to put your caster wheels on, really simply, just take one, find one of these holes at the base of the, um, the rack and lock it up into place. The casters themselves have a little break on them like that so that when you don't want them to roll, they won't. Um, but they do swivel and they make it easy for you to pull this thing around once you've got a whole lot of uh, liquid in the tank. Uh, if you don't want to use these or you want to take them off, it's a little bit tricky, but you just pull really hard and you'll be able to take that back out of the rack itself. So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to build the bottom part of the tank. So locate this bottom assembly. We're going to remove this nut. Before you drop it through, you can add a little bit of sanitizer to this this ring, and that might actually help it seal a little better when we tighten it back up. Holding it this way, get the nut onto this. So just like that, you see I was holding it so that it's got some uh, tension against the tank body itself. You'll use your cap spanner. This connection here, does unscrew and that allows you to put the collection ball, uh, the collection vessel on the end of the tank if you want to. Um, then there's this other thread that's inside that you would be able to use the two inch tri-clover fitting, which these tanks all come with. If you so wanted to, you could attach any two inch tri-clover elbow or ball valve to the bottom of these tanks instead of the collection vessel. But for right now, we'll use this one. And one of the things you will notice about this new bottom dump assembly is that all the threads have been kept internal and away from the liquid. So nothing passes through threading at all. Even up in the lid assembly, you're gonna see some changes there. For this next part, locate the plunge valve. Now your plunge valve should already have three O-rings at the top of it. It has this little uh, dent in it here. It's like a cut inside the plunge valve, that's gonna be for the circlip, so you can't lift the thing right out of the lid. So we'll put that on. But the first thing we're gonna do is you'll notice that there is an empty um, gap here that we're gonna put a O-ring in that comes with this O-ring kit. So for that bottom dump valve, for the plunge, you're gonna allocate one of these black O-rings from the bag of O-rings that you get supplied with in that bag of stuff that came in the box. 
So you can add a little bit of sanitizer to it or a little bit of keg lube, food grade silicon. Um, and then you're just going to stretch this into place into that gap, just like that. But what we're gonna do right now is just take out the circlip and we'll put that into place. The circlip goes into this little groove right here on the plunge valve. That'll help us for when we're lifting the plunge valve to not lift the valve so high that we pull the whole thing straight up to the lid. It'll help hold it kind of into place just enough so that liquid can drain from the bottom of this vessel. So now that we're putting this lid assembly together, we'll start with the dry hot port. Now we've given you this dry hot port that is also the PRV uh, chamber. So you'll be able to depressurize with the PRV which is the red one that lifts at 2.4 bar. And you'll put that into place as well. So that sits inside the cap. And for pressurizing or depressurizing purposes, you would depressurize, unscrew the cap. You could put in a funnel into the space and you could drop in dry hops or flavorings or whatever you want to through this top port without having to remove the lid. So we'll put that into place. The PRV goes into the dry hot port into this hole in the top of the lid. Now we're going to seat the posts and dip tubes on these two. You'll locate another bag that has a gas post and a dip tube with a O-ring on the dip tube already. Inside the gas post, there is supposed to be a spring and a poppet that also has a little O-ring on top of it. You might find that it's a little easier to push through the dip tubes if you use a little bit of sanitizer or again, the food grade lubricant. But that was super easy right there. So there you go. Find the other post. And again, start by going backwards and pushing it against the thread and you'll feel exactly where that hooked up. And now you can just twist it on and this will save your threads from actually getting stripped. So this is the lid assembly as it looks without the plunge valve in place. And what I want to show you really quickly first is underneath this lid, you'll find a half inch BSP thread. That's for seating a spray ball so that you can use this with a CIP kit. It's really easy to do. The CIP spray ball goes right onto the end of this. We give you a barb to go on this side. You'll pump from a cleaning kit and around and it will drive the spray ball inside, cleaning the tank for you without scrubbing if you want, and then out the bottom back into circulation so you can clean out the entire assembly of your tank. It's really simple to use and it's just that much easier. No scrubbing, it'll clean itself for you. Before we do anything else, you're gonna locate the bag that has the teeny tiny Allen key in it. And it also has this little keychain ring you're gonna grab that keychain ring and just drop it down to the bottom of the plunge valve like that. Simply slide the cap over down to the circlip. So locate your silicon dip tube, locate your floating dip tube, and that's gonna go into place just like this. Take the medium ring of the floating dip tube and attach it to the key ring that's on the plunge valve. Let's just put the handle into place. All you have to do is orient the top to the hole that's on top of the plunge valve shaft, put it into place, and then all we do is using the little Allen key, just tighten that into place so that the handle stays right where we need it. And that's it. Now the handle is on there nice and tight. So carefully insert the lid assembly into the tank and you'll see with the handle in the upright position like this, you've got a bit of play. You won't be able to take it any further up because of if it's sitting against the circlip, this is as high as you can get the plunge valve to go, which is plenty enough to get the things to drain into your collection vessel. But to seal up the tank, you're gonna push down on the lid so that the O-ring seats nice and tight inside the neck at the very top of this tank. So just push down until you see that the lid itself, and it's a nice tight seal on this one. Once that's pushed down into place, you're gonna find your collar. Slip that right over the side. You put that nice and tight 
It only needs to be finger tight again, just like that, into the tank. That's your lid. And now if we push down on this, that is a seal. So we can now fill this with a little bit of water or sanitizer in order to be able to clean it out. When these come from the factory, you don't need to do too big a clean on them to begin with, but you do have some manufacturing dust from cutting holes in them and all that kind of stuff that happens that you will need to rinse out. Then you definitely need to sanitize everything and check for leaks once you've got this full assembly. But this is the full assembly of our 60 liter. Like I said, you can choose to use the caster wheels at the base of it if you like or not. Now we've got this whole thing put together. I'm gonna to show you how to put the stickers on. So it's time to locate your volume sticker and you're gonna locate this red line at the very top of it. That red line is gonna go right at the corner between the collar for the lid and the rest of the tank that turns. This is gonna give you a great indication of the volume that you have inside the fermenter. So that's your thermometer sticker. Go ahead and peel it off. And you can put this anywhere you like on the outside as well. So the last thing we're gonna to attach to this tank is the collection vessel. So you simply unscrew the cap. And down here at the base, it screws straight into the threading. That's your 60 liter Fermenter King Uni tank. So if you decide that you don't wanna use the collection vessel and you wanna attach some two inch triclover adaptions, you can do that. You're gonna take off the vessel and you're gonna undo, there's a hex nut that's, uh, that, that the vessel screws up into. Inside of the adapter, it's completely smooth. So no matter what setup you have, we've um, taken the utmost care to make sure that the design of this fermenter has a smooth surface all the way through without threading. We've tried to remove threading everywhere possible when the design, with the design of this fermenter. So the half inch BSP fitting, that's one and a half inch BSP threading, screws into place at the base. And with a two inch triclover seal and any two inch equipment that you want to put in there, be it elbows or other ball valves, things like that, you're welcome to go ahead and use those in place of the collection ball. So that gives you a bit of flexibility with the design of this fermenter and how you operate it. So you'll have the whole thing assembled at this point and find that you have a lot of leftover O-rings and some other equipment. They're not leftovers, they're actually spares because we know that some of you live really remotely, whether you're in Australia or somewhere else in the world and finding the right O-ring could be kind of a pain. So we're giving you extra O-rings just in case anything were to happen with your own. There's also a couple extra grub screws that go with that handle, in case you were to take the handle off and lose a grub screw. And of course, there's this little Allen key, which you can keep and use for whatever other little Allen key projects you might have. So that's your 60 liter fermenter, completely assembled with the spares, with the options for the bottom uh, build out, however you'd like to. It gives you lots of flexibility for how you want to run your double batch. You've got 60 liters right up to the very top, which means that you have a little bit of headspace in your double batch with the liquid. So if you want to top up a little bit, you can. You have got a little bit of extra space. These handles are strong enough to pick up this whole vessel while it's full. I wouldn't recommend it on your own unless, well, maybe you can. I'm not going to, but you can get help and maybe you'll be able to move it if you had to. But that's why we're giving you the caster wheels so you can roll it and you don't have to lift. Each and every single one of these tanks is pressure tested off the line. We have a super smooth process that helps us create these so that they're a much safer product than most of the other things out there on the market. Um, what you'll find with this is that the insides are incredibly super smooth. That means that it's easier to clean. So we recommend that you don't use hot liquids when you're cleaning. Keep it well under 50 degrees, somewhere around 40 should be just about right. Mix in your cleaner and then either run the CIP from under the lid or you can do whatever you normally do because you can get in here. But we would recommend you don't scratch the surfaces and try rubbing internally. It's a great fermenter that's going to give you a lot of control in your fermentations on your brew days when you're making bigger batches and you want the whole thing in one go. Thanks for watching viewers.